So on a typical year, Purim would be next week. Take that in for a moment. Exactly, Ray. Purim would be next week. <laughs> We'd be getting ready to be shaken up by the telling and the interpreting of the story of Esther and Vashti, Haman and Mordechai. This year, we're inside a Shana Me'uberet, a year pregnant with 13 months. This leap year, which happens in the Jewish calendar seven times in each 19-year cycle, results in a doubling of the month of Adar, the most topsy-turvy of Jewish months. So this year, we're inside Adar 1, approaching our time of Na'afochu, the time that wants us to overturn expectations, to disrupt habits, to stand our reality, if only for a moment, on its head. The rabbis of Talmud teach Mishinichnas Adar Marbim Besimcha, when the month of Adar begins, joy blooms. This can feel like a tall order or like an abrupt shift to enter the month of Adar and be ready two weeks later for Purim. And all the more so this year, I think. In a typical year, we would be celebrating Purim this Tuesday. Imagine adding to the mix of everything that's happening these last weeks, Purim. The world is demanding already, right? So how would we hold Purim? How would we make space? This year, having two Adars is allowing me to experience this first one, this first Adar as a gentle on-ramp, as a toe dip into the possibility of something like joy. This first Adar is here as a buffer, cushioning our entry into Adar too. Only then will we take on the responsibility of becoming practicants, of nourishing ourselves through story, through overturning unhelpful narratives in service of new possibilities. But this month, this first Adar, we get to pay attention to what is limiting our access to joy, Lim limiting our access to a joy that is powerful enough to lift us and transform us. We read in Proverbs, Kol yemei oni ra'im v'tov lev mishte tamid. Life can be full of struggle, full of challenge, but one with a good heart lives as though it were a mishte tamid, as though life were a never-ending feast. Yosef Karo in the Shulchan Aruch connects this verse to Purim Katan, to the small Purim that happens only during first Adar next Tuesday. We are meant to increase our joy in order to open ourselves to the nourishment and uplift of this mishte tamid, this soul's nourishment that allows us to sustain through hard times. On Purim Katan, there are no special observances. The Shulchan Aruch, which offers us our foundational collection of Jewish laws and practice, encourages us to simply increase somewhat our seuda to increase a little bit, maybe, if we can, our joyous nourishment. But there's no obligation to do so. So this first Adar, this Purim Katan, don't come to make demands or to ask us to move past where we are. Instead, they say, how are you? What's feeding you? What's nourishing your spirit? What does service look like to you these days? In addressing us directly, in appealing to each of our levavot tovim, our good hearts. This Adar, this tiny Purim, invite us to pull up a seat at the table and to nourish ourselves for what's to come. Our Parsha Titzaveh brings this question to us in a different way. It's remarkable because of all of the Parshiot, from Shemot to Devarim, from Exodus all the way to the end of Torah with Deuteronomy, it's the only Parsha that does not mention Moshe by name. Moshe, instead of being addressed by his name, is addressed in second person, you. Our Parsha is full of God saying to Moshe, you shall do this and you shall do that, but never once does God say Moshe. And according to a teaching of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, by referring to Moshe as you rather than by his name, the text focuses on the importance of Moshe's actions. 
Moshe becomes absorbed into his avodah, into his service. And so the trappings of his identity dissolve, the details of his life, the particularities of his self, and something essential, something eternal emerges. Moshe in this Parsha is known through his relationships, through how he shows up. So our season, our text is directing us, is addressing us directly. It's asking us to show up with courage and with grounding, asking us to pay attention to what is needed to tend our hearts' fires. The season is calling on us directly, asking us, what do you need? What will you do to be ready for this season of change and transformation? What would happen to our hearts if we took those questions seriously? If we let our holiday cycle invite us into that kind of responsibility, that kind of action. This is a community of levavot tovim, of good and solid hearts, trying to do the right thing. And we as a community and as a city and as a planet are moving through all manner of struggle. So thank God for this Shana Me'uberet, for this year of slow approach to Purim. May we take this season with gentleness, opening to the possibility of joy. May we be nourished by these efforts and transformed by them. May we be shaken up and open, knowing that in order to sustain ourselves in this big work, we must take seriously what is needed to be ready. So to seal, to seal this Torah teaching and to seal this, this Shabbat evening together, I'm going to invite us to offer blessings to each other, to open ourselves to blessings. <clears throat> 